What's up guys, and as you can see behind me, I've got two three fours. That one is actually from the 96 Forerunner that we are currently building, and this one is now going into that 96 Forerunner. Brought to you in part by Alpine Toyota. So the difference between this motor and this motor is primarily mileage. This engine has over 500,000 kilometers on it, where this one's got about half that at what I'm told is about 230. Also, this motor is newer. This motor is from an 01, and this is the original one from the 4Runner that is a 96. Not only that, this thing has got a valve cover leak pretty much on all sides of the valve covers that have gotten so bad that this entire motor from top to bottom is coated in a thick sludge of oil. Whereas this one does have valve cover leaks, but it is not nearly that bad. And before this one's even ready to go in the Forerunner, it is gonna get a bunch of work, all new valve covers, intake gaskets, exhaust gaskets, all the stuff that's easy and might as well do it while it's out. I'm told that this motor also has a recent timing belt and water pump done. I'll verify that before it goes in, but uh, yeah, that's another bonus. And the biggest upside to this one, it hasn't fallen on its face. So because this motor is from a 2001, it's got a few features that are completely useless to us and just won't work. For example, the throttle body has an early drive-by wire system. That's useless. Our Forerunner is not equipped with all that stuff. And only that, the engine harness, well, the ECU has an immobilizer, which also won't work in our Forerunner. So the plan of attack is to take all of the electronics that I need to off this, the engine harness, the throttle body, and move it over onto this one, which should essentially make this motor plug and play in our Forerunner when we're ready to throw it in. So why don't we start by tearing this thing down and removing the old harness. All right, the intake manifold and harness didn't come off too bad. I had one problem where I couldn't find one bolt for the lower intake manifold and I felt dumb because it was right in the middle in plain sight, but <laughs> eventually I got it. The harness came out pretty well, no problems either. And now is an excellent time to take these valve covers off, probably paint the valve covers and I'm gonna do the valve cover seal. And while I'm here and it's easy, might as well take the timing cover off. Yep, I don't think I was lied to. This timing belt does in fact look like it's been replaced somewhat recently.
Well, with the valve covers off, you can see it looks pretty sludgy in there. I mean, it's a 20 year old motor, so it's not gonna be perfect, obviously. Um, maybe they weren't super on top of their oil change intervals. But uh, hey, overall, it looks like it's in good shape. It's just sludgy. So now it's time to clean these suckers up because we got to get them prepped for paint. The aluminum on these is just so corroded over the years. It's not worth trying to just wire wheel them down and make them look pretty. You might as well paint it while it's off. So this right here is simply just an old cooler that I have filled with Soapy water. Literally just dish soap. Nothing fancy. This soap itself is a degreaser. It actually works fairly decent on stuff like this. So now I'm just going to spend a whole bunch of time scrubbing it down with this little toothbrush thing and a wire wheel on my drill. Okay, so now that most of the corrosion and stuff is uh, taken off this valve cover, it's time to paint it. And for paint, I actually took my wife to the parts store and got her to pick the color. And we ended up going with this, uh, it's kind of like a bluey, silver, metallic. Anyways, she picked it out. It is engine specific high temperature paint, so it should work perfectly on this valve cover. I've taken my time and cleaned it up even further with brake clean, get all the rest of the residue off, and uh, Time to lay down some paint. All right, so now that this valve cover is all painted and drying up, it's time to grab the intake manifold and do the exact same thing. Clean it up and give her some paint. Now, I am in reassembly mode. I put the valve cover on this side. The intake is just kind of sitting up here. It's not actually attached. It's just there and out of the way. And uh, now I'm gonna do the valve cover on this side. So it had RTV in these corners here where it does a 90 degree turn straight up. So I'll just kind of replicate how it was. It also had RTV where these kind of half moons that come into the head are. I didn't replace those, but I am going to reapply the RTV that was there. I think I'm happy with that. Let's uh, put the valve cover on it. And rip my pants. As you can see, new seal is applied to the bottom. And I'll try to put this on without getting it completely filthy with my grubby hands. Just got to help it get over the spark plug seals. I also replaced the spark plug seals too. Uh, that was off camera. Three, boom. I also got brand new grommets for all these bolts. I did actually order new bolts too, but they're not here yet. So I'll throw these ones on and replace the old ones uh, when they come in. You know what? I think Sam, my wife, uh, made a good choice. This color looks fantastic.
on this motor. And with that being said, guys, that about wraps up this week's episode of Dirt Garage, and I hope you enjoyed it. We made some good moves here as far as getting the heart ready to go in the Forerunner. Yeah, she'll be ready to go in pretty soon. Anyways, guys, if you do me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button, and hey, consider subscribing. I upload weekly Toyota building, wheeling, and off-roading content. I'll see you next week. Peace. Yeah. Let's go. I'ma make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. I just work hard, yeah, harder than the rest. Some people say I'm lucky, others saying that I'm